Corla, Tonish, the, the crisis within children's disability network teams is well known to all of us. Major problems around recruitment and retention have practically become embedded within this system. But information that I received from the HSC's disability uh, services yesterday uh, shocked me and indeed reveals how stark the crisis has become across all nine CHO areas, especially within CHO Area 8, which encompasses my own constituency of Leash Offaly. In fact, the staff vacancy rate uh, ranges from 19% in CHO3 to its highest national level of 43% in CHO8, as I said, Leash Offaly is part of that CHO8. This means that almost half the children's disability staff positions are unfilled in Leash, Offaly, Longford, Westmead, Loud and Mead. I'm also informed by the HSC that while the largest discipline within the children's disability network teams is speech and language therapy, there are a staggering 162 whole time positions that are vacant out of a total of 447. Even more shocking, however, is the fact that there are 3,129 children waiting between 3 and 12 months or more for initial contact within CHO Area 8. Now, I have actually made representations for many children, uh, as have other TDs, I, I would imagine, in the constituency. But I am constantly um, being, I suppose, inundated with concerns of parents, particularly children transferring to post-primary school who still haven't got initial contact and have a diagnosis of autism. So it's very serious, and indeed it's letting down the children and failing the children. Almost unbelievably, 1,903 of the children, uh, the numbers I referred to, have been waiting more than a year with absolutely no first contact. And while I state these facts and bring these facts to your attention, I do want to commend the skeleton staff that are doing their best in these services and that are stretched. It's not their fault. They're too few in number. But I do want to state that they're doing all they can, but they need help. The only other CHO area that has a worse record than CHO Area 8 is CHO Area 9, which currently has 2,302 children waiting more than a year. This is a, a crisis of frightening proportions, and as I've said earlier, children are being failed. Incredibly, however, as part of the reply from the HSC, I was told the following, and I will quote it directly. Regardless of the nature of their disability, where they live or the school they attend, every child with complex needs and their families have access to a full range of supports. This is in the same response that confirmed that there are a total of 707 vacancies nationally across all of the children's disability network teams. There's a clear contradiction there. My question, Tanishta, is will you accept that the children's disability network teams are in catastrophic freefall and will you please outline what actions you and your government will take to resolve the issues? In the first instance, I do uh, accept that the situation is not at all acceptable in respect of disability services for children and in particular in relation to access to therapies. Uh, and the HSE have argued that they found it very difficult to recruit and, and, and to retain. I think there are fundamental issues there in terms of the human resource management of therapists, particularly in respect to paediatric services. The government decided uh, at the outset to transfer disability services, particularly for children, from the Department of Health to the Department of, of, of um, Children and Equality. Uh, and Minister Anne Rabbit uh, ha has done very significant work um, in the intervening period in respect of both the transfer, but also in terms of dealing um, in, in an immediate sense with, 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 with assessments uh, she did in her first year uh, in, in office in terms of accelerating assessments for many, many um, children uh, in respect of this. And secondly, the workout of the um, Progressing Disability Programme, which was um, developed back in 2013 by the HSE, but really has only began to move in 2018, 2019, um, has resulted in a significant dilution of services in respect to special schools in particular. And in meetings late last year with the HSE, um, we, we decide, government decided, and the decision was taken, um, that therapists would be um, assigned to special schools again uh, to create uh, access for particularly children with severe and profound needs, uh, that they would have access to uh, the requisite therapists. 
Uh, and in my view, that work is continuing, and there has to be um, an engagement, in my view, between education and health in respect of uh, therapists. Uh, in my view, we need multidisciplinary schools in our in, uh, sorry, multidisciplinary teams in our special schools, uh, so that at least uh, children in, in, in that context are um, that their needs um, are addressed. Uh, and more broadly, some CND teams are working now. Um, but there are clearly, and you outlined the difficulties in CHO8, uh, there are difficulties in other areas, and I'm, I'm well aware um, of those difficulties. And there's a particular issue with recruiting into children's services as opposed to other services. Uh, therapists are, are being recruited to services like stroke service or other areas of the health service, but it's been particularly challenging and difficult, difficult to recruit into uh, services for children with uh, disabilities and special needs. Uh, and that's something that I know the Minister and, and the Government remains possessed of and very focused on and endeavouring to deal with this, both on an interim basis and more long term. Uh, thank you for your response, Tanishta, but I do believe that there is a serious urgency needed here with what has happened. I mean, we have CHO Area 8 confirmed by the HSC that 3,129 children are waiting between 3 and 12 months. Those children are being failed. You outlined the measures that have been taken. And, and I acknowledge those measures. But however, the HSC have themselves confirmed to me from an overall analysis of data from 2020 and 21 and 2022, that just 2% in the entire children's disability network teams uh, saw an increase. So in their entire workforce, there was just an increase of 2%. That's coming from themselves. I believe, and many others believe, that there's cultural issues there, that there's a cultural, major cultural problem within the HSC, and that it needs to be addressed. That problem exists at institutional level. I have heard, and I'm sure many others have heard, that people who train as therapists want to work in the private sector, or they want to work abroad, anywhere but the HSC. So that would suggest to us all that there are serious problems. And I don't believe for a second that throwing funding at it is going to solve those problems. I believe it needs to be looked at in depth and in detail, but children need to be given access to vital and basic services, and that's my end point here. I thank the Deputy for raising the issue. I do not disagree with the Deputy's basic uh, points. Uh, I, I do believe, I think funding will help, by the way, and we have allocated additional funding, but you're correct. I think there is a human resource management issue here. Uh, in respect of how therapists um, are, are dealt with or treated within uh, the service and the, the quality of the work experience and progression uh, within the service. And that is a human resource management issue. The uh, new CEO has taken over uh, the health uh, area uh, who had been in Tusla. So I think the new chief executive officer will have a particular focus on children and, and, and the needs of children. Uh, and I will be taking those issues up uh, along with my colleagues, Minister for Health, uh, and Minister Anne Rabbit uh, also in terms of, of, of these issues.